Hello. In this module, I'm going to be taking you through the entire process of modeling and UV mapping an object. So to do this, I'm going to use the example of a barrel. Now when I model a barrel, I've got to start with something that's uh, the closest to its original shape as possible, just to simplify my life. I could do it straight from a cube or from something else, but I'm actually going to start with a cylinder. So I came up here under the poly modeling shelf and selected the cylinder. Now this is too high a resolution for what I'm trying to do. There's really no reason for me to have it at 20 sides, which is the, the default this comes at. Um, even high resolution games, things like uh, Assassin's Creed, generally only have about 12 sides on one of their, uh, their uh, barrels. And if they're able to do it with that low resolution, then so can we. But I'm actually gonna lower it even further down to an eight sided cylinder because this is going to be a little bit lower resolution. So with those eight sides, I'm then going to come in and get rid of all of these edges that are creating triangular shapes. So I will delete those after selecting them. Now if I leave it just like that, that's going to create an engon. If I had left those triangles there, those would be, well, first of all, I want you to work in quads uh, as you're beginning so that you can keep your topology good. But it would also have created something called tri-fanning. That's when you have a lot of triangles coming to a single point. So with those edges deleted, I will use the multi-cut tool. Cut across one way, cut across another. And that allows me to have three quads across the top. Now, the way I'm going to construct this barrel is I'm going to create half of the barrel and then make the uh, other side afterwards. So we're going to talk about that process a little bit as we go. So to do that, I'm going to first grab this bottom face and using snap to grid, so holding down the X key, I will bring that up to the grid level and hit backspace to delete it. Now I will select these top three faces and I will do a couple of extrusions to get it lined up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar so I can go to this four view mode and the space bar here to come in from the side. And this will allow me to get a better idea of the shaping of this barrel uh, in a way that I couldn't really see in that perspective mode. So I'll do another extrusion, bring this up and in. Scale this out just a little bit more. Grab this here and bring it down just a touch. All right, now to create the barrel shape on top, I'm gonna do another extrusion. Bring that in just a little bit. And what this is doing is this is creating the top of the boards that run along the side of the barrel. I'm going to do another extrusion and bring this down in so that it creates that little bit of a lip between the top of the boards and then where it comes down in for the lid, but it won't come straight down. Because of the shape of the boards and the way they angle and the way the lid's inset, I know that I need this to match the shape of the boards on the outside so it can create that curved shape right there. So with that, I have the top shape of my barrel. Now as I'm working on this, it's very important that these vertices across the bottom all be lined up equidistant apart and also right along the grid because if some one is either up or down, it's gonna create problems as you'll see in just a second. So there's a few different ways I can approach creating this duplication. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna start by just deleting the history you notice that cleaned up everything here. Um, I can also modify freeze transforms. It helps to clean things up as you go to prevent other issues from occurring. All right, so to be able to create the other half of this, if I come up here to edit, duplicate, you'll see that it says control D. On a Mac, this is command D. Uh, if you're not sure what the hotkey is, once again, you can come up to the file menu to find this, but I can just do a straight duplication. You can also do things like duplicate special, um, which in my 3D modeling two class, we get into a lot more and we talk about additional uh, modeling practices that help uh, increase workflow production and things like that. Um, but there are other ways you can do this as well. But either by coming up to duplicate or by hitting control D, so control D, or once again on a Mac command D, I can create a duplication 
which I can then rotate over. And to make sure this is exact, because if I have this part way, you can see that that creates some overlap and a gap. But to make sure it's exact, under the attribute editor, I can change that rotation to 180. And now it lines up perfectly. Now, if I had not had those vertices lined up with each other, this would have created a problem where I would have, uh, for example, this area separated, creating a gap, or having the issue with these vertices overlapping each other, which would also create issues, especially as I try and merge this together so that it works out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit uh, Control Z to step back. And with those back in place, now I can select both of these. So shift select both halves or just do a marquee select to select both of them. Start by deleting history, just so that it's not there. Do mesh combine. And so now it's all together, but we still have the issue of uh, this gap across the center. and then selecting the object after we've combined it and going Edit Mesh, Merge. And things are far enough separated that I don't really need to lower the merge threshold, but just out of habit, because I know that the things I want to merge are exactly on top of each other, um, I will actually lower the threshold and it's just a good practice so you don't accidentally have things merge that you don't want to. All right, so that should be merged. So the way I can test it is by grabbing one of these vertices and moving it up and down. And as you can see, it's it's all sealed and merged together. And so I control Z to step back from that. Now this has created an issue that I want to address right now. It's not a huge issue with this barrel, but it's a good habit to make sure that your edge loops continue through the form so that later on, if you do need to increase the resolution or make changes, you don't run into issues. For example, right now, if I try and create an edge loop, you can see how that didn't exactly work out because it cut across in strange ways with the form. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. Instead, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make sure that these edges are going along the same flow as the top edges. So from there down to here, I will zoom in just a little bit, make my life easier. Cut in there, cut over to here, hit enter to close that. Do the same thing on this other side, hit enter to close that. And now, if I decide to add in edge loops at some point in the future, Make sure I have the multi-cut tool on, holding down control and shift. If I create edge loops, you see I can get those to go straight through the form in ways that are much more meaningful. So I could make changes to that barrel, increase the resolution, and do a lot of interesting stuff that I need to. I'm actually going to step back right now because I don't want those edge loops right now. I want to keep that at a low resolution. But you can see how having good topology and setting up your edge loops to go all the way through the form can be extremely useful and helpful uh, with the modeling process. So now with this in place, I'm going to once again delete the history as I go, just to make sure things are cleaned up. But I want to do some final cleanup. I'm going to start by naming the object. So I will call this barrel underscore mesh. I will, uh, once again, edit, delete all by type history, modify, freeze transforms. I'm going to check the outliner. Yep, just the barrel mesh there. Everything else is cleaned up. Do mesh cleanup to check for end gons. Make sure it's set to select matching polygons and faces with more than four sides and hit apply. Nothing was selected, so I'm good with that. Um, I can come up to shading, turn on back face culling, go into the object, which it disappears. So I know that everything's good there with the face normals, but I'm also needing to worry about hard and soft edges. Right now, this is a very, uh, well, harsh barrel. Barrels in general are round. So what I will do is I will come in and as I'm holding down shift, double click on each of these edges so that through the form, I am able to grab all of those edges and I can do mesh display, soften edge. Now, as you look at it, you can see that it's mostly good, but I also need to get these three sections here. So I will go edge and then shift, double click, shift, double click to get, to get it to select those edge loops. 
and then I can once again mesh display soften edge so if I go back to object mode and deselect now you can see that that gives that visual smoothing to create the barrel shape. If I need to make adjustments and changes at this point, I can. I can grab this edge loop and then scale that out to make it a little bit more of a, a portly barrel. I can also grab that edge loop, shift select the next edge loop, and if I just scale up, you see how it goes up and down as well, and that can create problems. But if I need to scale out, I can grab this green face down here, which moves it only in two axes, and scale it up. Now I don't actually want my barrel to be quite so portly, but I just wanted to show you that that was a way to be able to make changes. And then I'd want to also do these interior edges so that it matches the, the shaping of the boards. So I'll bring these back. The other thing I want to mention is I did leave the, the top harsh because I, I wanted this to be hard edge so that visually it's smooth on the sides where the boards have been rounding up for the barrel. I want it to have that hard edge on the top where the, the top band and also on the bottom of the top band kind of blends into the top of the boards and then where it has that additional edge coming back in and where it separates between the top of the boards and the, the lids on either side of the barrel. The final note I want to make is about positioning. Right now, uh, because of the way I constructed this and because the center was at the origin, my pivot is at the origin, so this could work. But I want to talk a little bit about positioning for the pivots because based on what you're using the barrel for, you may want to adjust. If this is a barrel that's going to be rolling someplace or needs uh, motion from its center, or needs to be adjusted from its center, having the pivot in the center is a very, very good thing. On the other hand, if I want to stack the barrel, what I would do is I would move this up, adjust the pivot by hitting the D key, while holding down the V key for snap to point, I would snap this to the bottom of the barrel, hit the D key again to exit that mode, hold down the X key for snap to grid, and snap that down to the grid, and then I would freeze the transforms again. This kind of a barrel uh, is very useful for things like stacking, because what it allows me to do is very quickly place objects in a scene, and I'll, I'll bring these slightly closer together, and then I can grab, for example, these two barrels and duplicate them. If I, if I had them in a scene and was just placing them, I could use that pivot position to help make sure that they line up. So if I use uh, snap to point again and snap these up to the top of the other barrels, bring them over, you can see that very quickly I can stack them and efficiently get them placed in a way that works. So I'm going to step back again, control Z the whole way. Um, and I'm going to step all the way back to where that was in the center because for this barrel I just want to work on it from the, the center right here. But I just want to make you aware of those types of decision-making process. Whenever you're working on something, don't just make stuff. Think about what it will be used for, what the function is, where it's going to be seen, and that will help you to make good decisions about how much resolution to add to the geometry, how to lay out the UVs, uh, where to put the pivot, and all those other things that are so important in your uh, development process. But you need to be thinking about the larger picture rather than just, how do I get this barrel made? Um, so anyway, so there's the barrel. It's modeled. It's named. I need to do a cleanup again. So edit, delete all by type, history. I haven't changed any of the topologies, so I know that uh, there's no n-gons and the back faces are fine. Um, I will check the outliner one more time to make sure that when I cleaned up, there was nothing left over. And then I will save this. So file, save scene as. And once again, because I have the project set, I will call this barrel underscore one and save that. And actually, I'll make one more change to this. Uh, barrel one underscore mesh. And then just save it quickly again. So that's it for modeling the barrel. Uh, in the next video, we'll come back and start working on the UV mapping.